Father, we thank you tonight. Oh my, what a time we've had in your presence all week. We've lived in it. We've, we've, we've worshiped in it. We've, we've, we've been surrounded by it at night and slept in it. And it's, oh my, 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 my. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before you're seated, say this. Thank God, Thank God. Somebody, somebody from Vermont, from Vermont has, registered. has registered. Yeah, Vermont is here. <laughs> Give the Lord praise. Thank you. You can be seated. Praise God. I'm going to come on down there. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we open our ears tonight. Uh, now, you're believing with me, aren't you? You help me tonight. It has everything to do with the flow of the Spirit when you're receiving. Now, and I know that there's a bunch of us have been here all week long. We've been in every service. Amen. And your body gets tired, but your spirit is, your spirit's on, a, on your spirit is, it's on a run, brother. Amen. It, when, and at times like this, depend on your, depend on your spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, Brother Copeland, how do you do that? You exercise your faith. Yes, sir. Well, how do I do that? You say something. Yeah. I say, I'm strong. I'm strong. I have the joy of the Lord. And I have ears to hear. Body, you feel fine. Now just get in line. <laughs> you can also say it like this. I feel fine. Body, get in line. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's open our Bibles once again to the uh, book of Matthew, and we'll read Matthew 4, 1 through 4 once more. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness and to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry, or starvation had, had begun. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, I've mentioned this almost in every service, but it is very important to realize how intense this temptation was. Because once starvation begins, your body goes into just intensive hunger so that you will eat before you do damage to your, to your body because it's beginning to feed on its own organs. And it's a hunger like no one has ever experienced until you've been there. Well, I've never been there, but I, I have talked to people that have. And it, it's, it's just unimaginable by people that have never experienced it. And at that moment is when Satan came at him and he, he, he came at him right where he knew he was. Command. say something to those stones. Now we know he could have, 
because of what happened to the water when it turned to wine. Amen. So it was in the realm of severe temptation, trying to get him to do something that he had not heard his father say do and pull him out of his spiritual boundaries. Now, the reason we're bringing this up is that gives you information about how the devil works. He, he, he's not all that interested in coming at you when you're strong and jumping up and down full of joy and all that. It's when somebody has just made you just mad as you can be and, and, and something is just not going right at all. And he has an opportunity to really throw a real case of depression at you particularly if you somebody, you're someone that has had to stand against depression in time yeah. past. And uh, those of you that have, you know, I know, because I had to, I, I had to believe God and be delivered of that. And um, it, it can get so heavy and so oppressive, you don't want to say anything. And you really have to come to this by faith, praise God. And it's amazing how weak that thing really is once you speak it. And uh, that's, that is a very, very important revelation. And so check it out. You, you get under a, a, a depressive spirit like that. You get in the word of God and you do just like Jesus. It is written, praise God. I have the joy of the Lord. And you may just be done it through gritted teeth like that, but you get your job done. Amen. I said, you get your job done. Right. I remember when uh, on Christmas morning, Lindsay was 11 and they woke the kids up. Kelly woke their children up for Christmas. And Lindsay didn't recognize anybody and she was delirious and they rushed her to Cook's Medical Center here in Fort Worth and she was diagnosed with Nasserian meningitis and there's a lot of, a lot of children in, in, in the hospital that it had come right to, to becoming um, on an epidemic level with children dying and being maimed by that disease. And the infectious disease specialist was to telling Kelly how, after they did the, the spinal fluid test and all that, how absolutely terrible that test turned out. And that, that really, they just did not expect Lindsay to, to live over this. And Kelly said, Daddy, this dark, heavy cloud, darkness, oppressive heaviness came on her. Now at a time like that is when you need to first keep your mouth shut. Amen. Amen. Say this, first words, first words are extremely important. Are extremely important. The, first the first thing you say, first thing, is the way this thing going to turn out. Because when you're under pressure, you're not talking out of your mind or your brain. You are talking out of your inner man, whether it's in anger and fear or in faith. Yeah, that's true. Very important. You come home, find your house burned down. You better stuff something in your mouth. Mainly the word but don't you be saying something until you get the word in your mouth. Yes, sir. You have to be trained to do this. You have to work at this. Work at it while the pressure's not on. Yeah. I mean, you drop something on your foot. Watch what you say. Yeah. 
I'm walking through the, I came home. I'd been on the road for days and days and I was, I was so home. It wasn't even funny. You know? Man, I'm, I'm just slopping around in the, in the living room and I got up and I was about half asleep and Kelly, Glo, I mean, Gloria had already gone to bed and I got up, turned the light out and now, you know, don't turn the light out and then walk across the room. Come on. <laughs> And I just drop kicked this big, heavy ottoman. That, <laughs> you better watch what comes out your mouth. I shouted, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm healed. I broke my, um, I broke one of my toes. But before dark, the next day, it was completely, totally healed. Amen. Now I don't have time to tell you about the whole story, but that was those first words. Yeah. So they gave Kelly that information. She turned and walked to Terry, her older sister. She walked over there to her and she said, I refuse to fear. And Kelly said, Daddy, when I said that, she said, that dark, heavy thing just, she said, it just, it just flew like a bird flying out the window. It was just gone. And the joy of the Lord was there. Yes. Amen. Amen. And before sunrise, the next day, Lindsay was healed. But you can't, you, 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 you can't be going on like, oh God, my baby, they told me my baby. You better shut your mouth, mama. Till you got something better than that to say. I mean it. Go getting mad and throwing stuff around. That will get you killed. That's what the word means to be carnally minded is death. It will kill you. Now, he said, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus answered and said, it is written, I just tell you, I, that, that just gets to me every time I read it. Because when he said it is written, that just handed you and me the sword, brother. Because we can say it's written. Amen. Amen. This is not some special heavenly born um, thing that only the son of God could do. No, this is as a man being tempted by the devil. And he said, it is written. And he won it yes. with the written word of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, I don't preach myself happy. Glory to God. Cause I can do that. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The big thing here, the stretching word all this week is every word, every word. If God has ever said it, you can hear it. If he has ever said it, you can say it. Amen. Amen. We were created not only in his image, but in his likeness. We are like him. Abraham, like God, called things that be not as though they were. Amen. Well, how far back is were? Were is before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. And you, God knew you. He knew your name. And he loved you. And you were perfect in his eyes before there ever was a world. Before there ever was a devil. Before there ever was, a, hey, you listening to me? You hearing what I'm saying to you? God's known you a long time. He didn't just meet you four or five years ago when you got saved. 
no, no, darling. He knew you, knew your name before the foundation of the world. Look up the scriptures, get your concordance and look up before the foundation of the world. Go to all of those different scriptures and see what belonged to you before there was even a world. Amen. Everything was perfect. Why? It was still in the heart and mind of God. Now, how did he get it into being? He spoke. Amen. He spoke. Hallelujah. Well, we're created in his likeness. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Now, let's go back over to the book of Ephesians and take another look at this prayer the Apostle Paul prayed. Now, God gave this to him so that he would pray it. He didn't write it and then pray it. He was praying this for this cause. I bow my knees unto the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ in the 14th verse. He was praying it and then wrote it. Why did he write it? So they could pray it. Amen. And so you and I could pray it. God intended for this to be prayed. You know why he intended for it to be prayed? Because he intended to do it. Amen. 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 That's, that's what the whole thing's all about. Yeah. The main job of the prophets was to give the people God's words to say so that then the Father could accomplish what they said. That is the heaven and earth connection. Amen. The bridge between heaven and earth, God and men is his word. Hallelujah. All right. I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom of the Father, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now, Jesus is included in that. See, he's named of the Father. He's in heaven. But when we, were, when we accepted him as Lord and Savior, we became one spirit with him. We were given his name. We, we entered into covenant with God the Father on Jesus' side. The covenant, the new covenant is between God the Father and Jesus, the resurrected immortal man. He didn't, once he was raised from the dead, he didn't go back then to the state he had been before he came into the earth. No, no, no. He's a man today with a physical body. It's got scars in it. When he was raised from the dead, no blood, no blood in his veins. His veins are filled with the glory of God. He's what you call a glorified human being. After he was raised from the dead, after he went to heaven, officiated and, and brought in as the high priest of God, officiated the new covenant between he and the Father. Do you remember right just moments after he'd been raised from the dead and Mary was there and he said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended my father and your father. He had a mission before him. He, he went into the heavenly holy of holies and officiated his blood on the heavenly mercy seat of God. Right. And God swore to him every word of the New Testament and every promise of the old covenant. There is no curse on this covenant because it's between two that cannot die. God the Father and a a holy, glorified human man. Immortal. 
Immortal means untouchable by death. Covenant between the two of them. God swore this entire new covenant to him. Every word of it. Called him God. You see the, you, you see the outline of it in the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. He said, again, I will be a father to him. And again, he will be to me a son. And called him God. And instituted him as, as head of God's family. Whew, glory to God. That, 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 this kind of thing, I mean, this really gets to me, brother. I, cause I, this, this, this is reality. This is life in the faith lane. This is, this is where our life is. We live by faith. We live by faith in that covenant. That covenant cannot be broken. It's between God and the man, Jesus. Neither one of them break it. Therefore, there's no curse on it because it can't be broken. Now we came into this thing on Jesus' side of it. Now when, when we do something <clears throat> that is crosswise of that covenant. <laughs> Amen. It doesn't break the covenant. Part of the covenant is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. That's, that's a covenant promise. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, you want, me, you, want me, you want me to help you with something? That is an it is written. That's an it is written. Oh, yeah. And they, oh, I'm telling you right now, you can rip hell wide open with that. <laughs> I was in the, <clears throat> down in the southeastern part of the United States years ago. And I was preaching. <laughs> I was in a very difficult meeting. It, it was, I, I was supposed to be there. God sent me there, but it, it was a tough assignment. And um, I was under an awful lot of pressure. And Gloria, for some, for some reason or other, it was very, very unusual that, that she wasn't there. But for some reason, we, our schedules got crossed and she was preaching somewhere else. And that doesn't happen very often, but it did then. And I didn't, have, I didn't have my prayer partner with me, man. <laughs> and I'm down there for nearly a month in that meeting. And it just got, uh, you know, you think about singing the old rugged cross. Well, she just got more rugged and more rugged the, the longer this thing went on. And I, 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 I messed up. I'm telling you, I ain't going to tell you what I did. Ain't none of you, it's a nunna. <laughs> none of your business. <laughs> oh, man. I, and then, I, I, then, of course, I just I felt like a dog. And I, I went to the Lord and repented about it. Then it got on me that afternoon, and I'm supposed to be over there preaching that night. And the, the closer it got to meeting time, the more I did not want to go. I was tired, and after all, I've done that. I'm fouled up this afternoon already anyway. Finally, I just told the Lord, I said, I'm not going over there tonight. You just get you somebody else. And he said, Why? I said, well, you know why. After what I did today, I'm, I'm not going over there and stand up behind that holy desk and stick up my big bony finger and say, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> now I'm not going. He said, why? There ain't none of you been. <laughs> I told you a while ago, don't ask me again. Because <laughs> it ain't on the books. <laughs> I love you, baby. And, uh, and, and he said, uh, Kenneth, when you confess that sin, son, is not when I found out about it. He said, that's when you got rid of it. Now he said, didn't I say in my word, I would cleanse you from all unrighteousness? I said, yes, sir. 
He said, you, you prayed that. You read that scripture. You prayed that. I said, yes, sir. He said, now you need to come against the symptoms of guilt. The sin has been removed, but there's, your, your flesh is, is, is involved in symptoms of it. Now, particularly things that have been wrong in your life for the extended period of time, you've been having a run in fuss with somebody and all that. And you finally get, God finally gets hold of you. You say, well, oh God, I forgive them. I forgive them as an act of my will. You said you commanded to forgive and I forgive. This is a covenant forgiveness in obedience to your command. I'm not doing this because I feel one way or another. I have made a covenant decision to obey you and in your name, I forgive so-and-so right now. They are forgiven. Well, then you go along three or four days or so, and you're down at Walmart one day, and you start out, and, and, and there she comes in the front door. And your old flesh, <coughs> you know, it just, and you say, you're going to go way around here. And then you start to say, oh, no, I thought I had forgiven her. You did. This is carnal symptoms of something your flesh practiced for a long time. That's good. Yeah. So what do you do? Flesh, it is written. He has forgiven me of my trespass and he has cleansed me of all unrighteousness. Now what are you going to do? You're going to act by faith. Hi, darling. I prayed for you yesterday and the day before. And she said, ah. with well, her mouth hung on. You hadn't spoken to her in three months. I just want to know I love you. See, in heaven, that thing is already written off. It, it's not been covered over. It has been blotted out. Amen. It is not recorded anymore. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now we're talking, don't, don't lose your place there in Ephesians because we're coming back to that in just a moment. But this needs to be dealt with because you're going to be running into this kind of thing over the, the next few weeks. Satan trying to steal the word that you got while you're in this meeting. Second Corinthians 5, the 17th verse. Therefore, no, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let's go ahead and read that. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Now, turn over to the seventh chapter. Having therefore these promises, see, covenant promises. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. How could he say that? This man killed Christians. This man hauled Christians into dungeons. This man incited the riot that killed Stephen. He was holding their coats while they stoned him. Now how can he come up with this? Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Philippians. And look in the third chapter, Philippians chapter three, 
Verse 13. Now, look about midway in that verse. You're going to find the word this, but this. And then you're going to find two words, I do. Notice that all three of those words are in italics. They have been italicized. They were placed in there by the translators. They put them in there. We have the right to take them out and see how it affects that verse. And then, of course, you, go, you get other translations and so forth. You just do your study. But, but look at what he said. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Now notice the colon marks, the two little dots after the word apprehended. There are no punctuation marks in that Greek text. Now here's the way this reads. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but one thing. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in the anointing of Jesus. He said, I, 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 I can't claim to have apprehended but one thing and that's it. Now, now, why? Can you imagine the kind of condemnation he was under after he persecuted the body of Christ like he did? Well, absolutely. That's where he learned how to do this. That's the reason he could write to the church at Rome and say, there is therefore, you know, he, he said it. How am I going to get rid of this terrible body and get out of this, this condemnation? He's, and then he said, who will deliver me? And then he said, Jesus, that's who. Amen. For there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law, say law. law. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. But he had to continually then do what he said in 2 Corinthians. Let's go back over there. In chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations or reasonings and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedient or all disobedient thought. Being ready to come against that thought that, that, that comes against the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Every time he had a thought of, of that stoning day with Stephen, he just, had, he just had to stop and say, no, sir, I do not touch that with my thought life. I cast that imagination down. Amen. I'm not the same man. That man died on the road to Damascus. I've been born again. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. All that passed away. Now, when, see, God has the ability to absolutely, totally forget. Not just put out of mind, but forget. He said, I wipe out your transgression. They are gone. By faith, we can do the same thing. That man did it. Or God never would have allowed that to become scripture. I have defrauded no man. I've wronged no man. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, th this is outstanding news. You can fight and win over PTSD with this. You, hey, anybody in here that, that the devil's trying to tag with that, there's, just, there's your deliverance right there. 
I mean, you can wipe that stuff out of your mind. I tell, and it's a whole lot easier to do than you think it is, but you can't do it with carnal weapons. You have to do it with mighty weapons in the spirit. And I mean, it will do the job. Amen. 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 I said, Amen. now you take someone that's been for years under the influence of an evil spirit somehow or another in their life, some addiction or, or that kind of thing un, under the influence of that thing. And you get delivered of it. Well, Jesus said that devil's going to try to come by. And you start having some of those old uh, I saw you last night and got that old feeling. You better shut up. <laughs> you fixing to get yourself into trouble, boy. You better go call mama and go home. <laughs> Them old feelings going to get you in trouble. So what do you do? You take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Why? Those are flesh symptoms of something that used to be there. Don't yield to them. Go get in the Word. Start speaking the Word. It is written. And go back over the scriptures that I just showed you, particularly in 1 John. You go right in there in 1 John and you read that again. You say, now Satan, now you listen to me. It is written, if I confess that sin, I confessed it. And he was faithful and just to forgive me of that sin. It is not recorded to my account anymore. And you know it, devil. You know it. You don't have any right to come at me with this. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Now you shut your mouth and get out of my presence right now. I have been cleansed of all unholiness. And if I'm cleansed of all unholiness, that means uh, unrighteousness. That means there ain't nothing left but righteousness. So you better get now. You'll preach yourself happy in a few minutes. But if you sit around and think about it, thoughts will harass your soul. Your soul needs to be strong. Your will, your mind, and your emotions. This stuff, when your soul begins to be harassed, it causes your will power to weaken. Your will is part of your soul. And when that happens, the next thing is your emotions start running loose. And you can tell it in a little bit. You, you begin to think, dear God, I need to do something. I'm out of control here. Well, don't start saying you're out of control. Amen. Get back in the Word. It is written. It is written. It is written. Start back over there. So just, I mean, I, I have... I, I really in, enjoy it. I just go back over there in Deuteronomy 30, 19. I choose life. I choose the blessing that my, me and my seed shall live. And I just start coming down through there. Praise God. What am I doing? Same thing Jesus did. I'm using the sword. It is written. It is written. I came across into the book of Exodus one day, uh, standing and exercising my faith where my healing is concerned. I never had seen this. I don't know how many times I've read this. I've prayed for people based on it. And, um, you know, where it said, uh, 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. I certainly do. And he will bless your bread and your water and I. Now, wait a minute. He will bless your bread and water and I will take sickness and disease from the midst of the earth. He, what's going on here? So I backed up and I said, well, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place where I have repaired. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. He will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. And if you will indeed obey his voice and do what I speak, then I'll be an enemy to your enemies and adversary to your adversaries. Uh, you serve the Lord your God and he, that angel, will bless your bread and your water and I'll take sickness and disease from the men of you. You got an angel working with you. Amen. 
and your, your angelic assistance, you, you're, you were assigned an angel when you were born into this earth. That's right. Amen. 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 When you got born again, then you are assigned additional helps and depending on uh, the kind of assignment and, and, and how you obey God and continue to grow, your angelic assistance grows. Amen. Amen. I, I was preaching in a, a city down in South Texas one time and I said something when this fellow didn't like, he got up and left. And I saw, I saw him get mad and saw him leave. The little building wasn't all that big. And it's about, it's about as large as this center section here. And he was sitting about two rows down. He just got up and left. And so he was gone for several days. And then one day he came back and he sat right on the back door, right next to the, right on the back seat, right next to the back door. One step and he's gone. And I saw him looking at me. And all of a sudden, his eyes got big. And he just, of course, I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea. The reason he caught my attention because I knew he left mad. And then I see him come back and say, so I know something's going on with him. Well, later he said, Brother Copeland, I, if it's permissible, he said, I, I really do need to. He said, if you could have lunch with me, I, I really need to tell you something, brother. Well, he already had my curiosity up. I want to know what's going on with it. He said, and he reminded me of what I said, and he didn't like it, and he came up, and he got mad and left in a huff. He got home and said, I ain't never going back over there no more. And the Lord said, really? No, I ain't going back. Well, I need you to go back. No, I ain't going back over there. He said, yeah, I want you to go back. He said, all right, I'll go back one service. And I, one time, if he pulls that again, I'm gone and I am not going back. Well, that's when he came in and sat right back there <laughs> on the back row. He said, Brother Kenna, you were preaching long. And he said, all of a sudden, God opened my eyes and he said, there's the biggest angel I ever saw. I didn't know they got that big. And he said, Brother Kenneth, he looked just like Mr. Clean. <laughs> you know the commercial, Mr. Clean? Well, this back there when it first came out. And there stood Mr. Clean, you know, with all that white suit on and a bald head. And he's standing there. Like, but he, Mr. Clean, you know, big, big man. He said, he looked just like Mr. Clean. And he said, he was so close to you, I couldn't tell. Uh, he said, it looked like he stuck to you. He said, you could, I couldn't see between the two of you. And he said, you're moving around. He said, he's, he's right on you all the time. Whatever you did and wherever you went, he's right there on you. And he said, you'd kind of calm down a little bit and he'd lean over there and say something to you. Man, off you'd go again. Well, I, I knew from the word and I knew from th some things that the Lord had taught me, I, I, I knew that he was there, but I never had seen him. I sure didn't know he looked like Mr. Clean. <laughs> <coughs> but now since, <coughs> excuse me, sometime later on more than one occasion, other people would come tell me the same thing that you got this angel that goes around with you and he's he, he great big and looks like Mr. Clean. <laughs> Amen. And, and then other experiences that I've had down that line, the uh, army of angels are available to you. Didn't Jesus say he'd call legions of angels? So they were, they were available to him. Now, when you see a phrase like the angel of the Lord, that's just exactly who it says it is. It's his angel. Amen. Now, I found out here, look what I have. This is part of the job of my angel. It's part of the job of your angel. Well, how do you provoke an angel? But by going off and saying doubt and unbelief junk, and, and talking fear and all that mess. The reason it provokes him is because he's listening for the voice of the word. Right. 
they hearken to the voice of the word in the earth. And when you're saying something else, he, I mean, he can't obey God. He just, he just, just strung up. We are snared by the words of our mouth. Well, so is your angel. So be aware of that. All the time, be aware of these things. Now, I started saying that, and I'm just coming down over there, and I will take sickness and disease from the midst of you. And I started working my way across here, Deuteronomy 30, 19, and then I came across just the healing scriptures that I've got marked, and I'm going through here, and I'm talking about these things, and I'm putting them in my mouth. It is written, it is written, it is written, praise God. And I'm coming along, and I'm coming along to the book of Proverbs, and I got into Proverbs chapter four. And I, I started saying that and, and 4, 20 and 21. Turn over there and let's look at that. Proverbs chapter four. Remember every word? You remember every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? Look, look in Proverbs chapter four and look at verse 20. My son, attend to my words, my words, my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life unto those that find them and their medicine to all their flesh. All their flesh. All your flesh. Can you hear what's happening here? I'm living by faith on the words that proceed out of the mouth of God. And I kept doing that and I'm just going through and all these different ones. And I come over there to the gospel of John, turn over there and look at that with me. Chapter six, and Jesus said in John 6, 63, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And I came across the 10th chapter. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I have chosen life and blessing. I have the words of life working on. They are my life. Glory to God. They're held to all my flesh. And he's taken sickness from the midst of me. This stuff just starts building and I'm just, I'm just is going, it is written, it is written, it is written. Now, as you're saying it is written, it begins to come alive on the inside of you and you begin to hear these things in living words. Amen. They're the word of God, but they're living words on the inside of you. And they, they start coming out of your mouth without you having to make the decision to say them. Amen. When that happens, they're faith filled. Well, my, I, I had received the healing from my physical body that I was after. But I'd been doing this for some days. And uh, that particular morning that I'm going to tell you about, I got in the car and headed out my driveway. We've got a, a long driveway coming out there, headed toward the, the main road out there by our, uh, our gate going out of the property. And I'm riding along there, and, I'm, and these scriptures are still coming up. And I said, thank God, my bread's blessed. My water's blessed. He has taken sickness from the midst of me. Thank God my bread's blessed, my water's blessed, and he has taken sickness from the midst of me. And I started preaching to myself, my God, my water's blessed, my bread is blessed, and he's taking sickness from the midst of me. And I got about halfway down that driveway, and, and this time, the it is written started pulling stuff out of me. I said, yeah, it is written, glory to God. My bread and water's blessed, and he's taking sickness and disease from the midst of me, and I'll never be sick again in my life hereafter forever. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See what he did? Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, I could have said that, just by making a decision to say that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Not anything wrong with it. Particularly as long as you've got, you're, you're basing it on the Word of God. 
But my brother and sister, when you get in the Word, you're living on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the more you say it, the bigger it gets. And when that starts, you, you've had it before your eyes and you're keeping it in the midst of your heart and you're saying it and pumping it in there and, and you're saying it and putting it in, saying it and putting it in, saying it. There's coming a time when it's going to come flying out your mouth and you had nothing to do with getting it out of there. It's just coming out. It may be at a time when you're under some real pressure. And it just comes flying out. I tell you, every demon within miles will hightail it out of your presence. Amen. And when it comes out of there, you go, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Amen. Man, that is something. That is a real thing. Come out of that then. Amen. We are equipped to walk like this all the time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. You, don't let, you don't let depressive thoughts get into your mind. Amen. No, no. I, I'm the, <laughs> I, I had a situation with, uh, with John when he was little. I'd go in and pray for him. And uh, this thing that was on his skin, it was really... He was in a lot of pain. He was just a little boy, about four years old. And um, it, it was, he, was, he was in so much pain. And I'd go in there and lay hands on him and pray for him, and he'd get easy. And then, then it wouldn't be but a little while, and here he'd be back. And I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is going on here? That shouldn't be coming back like that. I, I prayed and believed God. He said, well, you pray, you roll a care of it over on me, but then you go back in there and pick it up. And I had been, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd think I better go check on John. Well, I'd go back in there and, and, and there you go, tearing it down. See, I, it wasn't faith that sent me in there. I had to go to it is written. And so when the Lord showed me that, I went in there and put him to bed, laid hands on him, read the healing scriptures over him, went over to 1 Peter 5, 6 through 10, and rolled all the care of my son over on you, Lord. I'm going to bed and I'm leaving him in your care. Went on in, went to bed. Right on schedule, I woke up. Now, this is a... This is a, uh, this is a uh, a, a, a small example of what Job got to do it. Yeah. He's doing the same sacrifice over and over and over and over and over because he was so afraid his kids were going to curse God. That's right. Well, I woke up right on time. Better go check on John. And I already had the cover off and one foot over on the floor. And then I, 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 I remembered, I caught myself. I said, no, I'm not going in there. Yeah. And just as plain, I heard the devil say, yeah, but he's kicked his cover off and you need to go, you need to go check on him. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. In the name of Jesus, if his cover is kicked off, my ministering angel can go put it back. Amen. I'm not going in there unless I hear the word of the Lord on it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the word of the Lord. Yeah. It is fear. Yeah. And so I just got back in the bed and I heard it again. I said, no, I am not going in there. And yeah, but you're just what kind of a daddy are you? Yeah, 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 irresponsible. No, I just got through doing the most responsible thing I could possibly do. That's right. I got up. Glory was asleep. I got up out of bed, and we were, we were, we had rented a little apartment in a the area close to the facility where we had a meeting going for three or four weeks, however long it was. I got up and went in the other room and took my Bible. I started praying in the spirit. And, I, and then I, I got over on the, 
the eighth chapter of Romans. And I said, just in, in, I don't know whether you can read or not, Satan, but I'm, I'm going I'm to read something here too. I started out loud on the eighth chapter of Romans and wound up down there. I'm more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then just went off and prayed in tongues for about 45 minutes. Well, when I did, I noticed that lifted. I went on to bed, slept good. Didn't think about John anymore. Got up the next morning and left for the morning service. Well, the morning service was over and I was standing there talking with some people that had been in that service about some of the things that, that I'd talked about that month. And I felt this tug on my coat. And I heard John say, Daddy, I turned around. And I said, Son, don't, please, I'm, I'm busy right now. I'll be right wet with you. And I turned back around and he grabbed my coat again and said, Daddy, I said, John, please, son, boy, I, I'll be right with you. He said, Daddy, look at me. I turned around and looked and he said, I'm healed. <laughs> Amen. Now his skin had been just cherry red, man. I mean, angry red and a lot of pain. And he said, look at me. And he's just as healed as he could be. Now, every word, every word, every word. Oh my. Jesus said, Mark 13, 31, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will not pass away. These are forever. These are eternal words. And you think about, Jerry talked about it last night, 24 hours after God said, light be, 16 billion miles of universe in existence. 16 billion miles. That's 24 hours at the speed of light. And do you know it's still expanding at the speed of light? And you have the spiritual capacity to live on every word he has ever spoken. And with his compliance, to speak it after him. Right. Amen. You know what? There's coming a time. <laughs> soon and very soon. All this is going to change. Oh yeah. All this is going to change. I am totally convinced that God has in mind. I know it's going to happen because the scripture says so. But I am totally convinced that he, when he just wipes out all of those planets, they're, they're messed up. And we're going to get to create this new one. I really believe that, no? I, I'm really convinced that. We're, we're going to have a part in creating this new one. <laughs> Oh, it says throughout the ages to come, he will show the exceeding riches of his grace towards us. Amen. Amen. Hey, you're you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see him uh, coming down your street and he's going to say, come here. Yes, sir. How may I help you today, sir? I'm going to show you something. Come on. And he's going to take you into some special place. And he's, he's going to say, okay, baby, now here's what you say. And he's going to give you words. And you're going to go, wham! Look at that! And he's going to name that planet after you. Hey, this, 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 is, not, this is not pipe dreams. 
That's what he intended to do in the first place. That's the reason all those empty planets are out there. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Man, I did. Glory to God. I saw lots of things tonight. Stand with me. <clears throat> Raise your right hand towards heaven and say this boldly. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. I commit tonight the written word of the living God is final authority in my life. It is God speaking to me. I receive it. I receive its authority. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. I can do all things through the, the anointing that strengthens me. I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong in the power of his might. I am in him and he is in me. I believe I receive when I pray. Ministering spirits are in my life. Are in my life. According, to According to Hebrews chapter one. I receive my ministering angel team, ministering angel team. To, obey to obey the voice of God. The it is written, it is written. through my mouth, through my from my to the glory of God the Father. The Father. He, is he is my Lord. And I am His to command. I, to command. I live and have my life in Him. I live my life through Him. I am sitting in heavenly places right now. And I receive my place. I receive the mercy. I receive the grace. And I am bold at the throne of grace. I believe God. He is my life and my Lord. He is my Savior. I am born again. Jesus, you are my Lord. Come into my heart right now. I receive you. I receive your Holy Spirit in full measure. In Jesus' name, I am a believer. I am a Christian. I don't care who knows it. I am determined to be more like you, Lord Jesus. Today is the beginning of the rest of my life. And the rest of my life is forever. And ever and ever and ever. Jesus is my Lord. And him I serve. He is my all and all. He is my all and all. Oh, glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Whew. Learn to do that. Learn to do that. Hallelujah. At the time, I was in the most pain I've ever been in in all my life. The scripture says, a man's strong spirit will sustain him 
in times of trouble and pain, bodily pain. I was in the worst pain I've ever been in in my life. And I went out on the, went, went out on the, in, in my backyard. And I had, I had gotten two electric heating pads and tied them both around, around this leg. I took sashes out of two different bathrobes and tied those things on there and turned the heat up just as high as it'd go because of the nerve pain that was just, whoo. Like the cowboy said, they got some shooting pains, man. But I realized I began to tell God I was grateful. And I got, kept getting louder and louder. I said, sir, I am thankful. I am grateful to you. I am grateful to be called your son. I am grateful to be a citizen of heaven. I am grateful to be part of the family of God, the household of faith. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the sky. I'm grateful for the trees. I'm grateful for the grass. I'm grateful for the birds. I'm grateful for everything that lives and moves. I'm grateful for the Holy Ghost. I'm grateful for my angels. Long as I was saying that, I wasn't in any pain. But then I'd start quieting and down, it started hurting again. So I just kept on doing it. And finally got up from there and unhooked up stuff and started walking around. I'm grateful, glory to God. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I am healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I live in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God lives in me. I am a believer. Folks, that's the way you fight the good fight of faith. It needs to be in you like that all the time all the time. That's the way you get it in there. You read the book and you speak it with your mouth until your spirit fills up with it. I was preaching in a church. I went to the church early. I'd just walk around in the auditorium, just pray in the spirit there before people got in there. I tell you, I like Christian bookstores. Oh, they, they even smell good to me, man. I, I, I like Christian bookstores. And they had a real nice bookstore in that church. And the lady that, that was in charge of that bookstore had already come in and she was rearranging some things before the people got there and all. Well, I walked in there and she spoke to me and I'm looking around and I picked up a couple of things and walked up there at the counter and, and got my money out to pay it. And, and here's what I did. <coughs> That's it. She said, is it a cold or hay fever? I said, I don't have colds and I don't have hay fever. By his stripes, I am healed. I'm delivered from the curse of the law and all sickness and disease are under the curse of the law, including colds and including hay fever. By the blood of Jesus, I have overcome and by the word of my testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't have a cold now and I'll never have another cold. I don't have hay fever and I'll never have another hay fever. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. She's standing there kind of stunned. She said, I knew I shouldn't have said that when I said it. But the, the more I went, the bigger her eyes got. And before I got through, she was healed. That's where you ought to be all the time. Somebody comes up and says, oh, I tell you, it's just terrible. What are you doing? Yeah, well, I mean, just, just, they just push your button. No, there ain't anything terrible. Faith is the, is a, whoa, glory to God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And this is the vi victory that overcometh the world. I'll tell you right now, I don't care what the economy does. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I'm a citizen of heaven itself. I sit at the right hand of Father on the throne of grace. What? Now, when you get your spirit full and get up at that level like that, you get so dangerous to the forces of darkness, Satan don't want much to do with you. He goes to messing with you, you jerk that sword on him. <laughs> Amen! Amen! 
Now catch hands with one another. Pray ye for one another that ye may be healed. You got enough word in you tonight? You got enough faith in you tonight to heal China? Pray ye for one another. Pray in the Spirit. Shkelo bripika tala kefe pehele maneneko. Brobo bush dig shishele keva. Gifts of healings, working of miracles, special faith. Spo tole kefe, discerning of spirits. Breba kititis tok sokse, 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 baske pebre, ba ba bo fre ba, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be strong in the name of Jesus. My goodness, there's, an, there's, another, there's another teeth miracle in here tonight. People's teeth, teeth, <clears throat> people's teeth are being restored, replaced. Last night, somebody got a whole mouthful, a whole, all, the whole mouthful of teeth replaced. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Well, this has been quite a birthday party tonight, hasn't it? Yeah, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord.